today is monday and i hope everybody who is watching this is having an awesome monday me i'm doing good i cannot complain apart from my internet acting up here and there on twitter things are going swimmingly now i do have some red hot news for you today the topics that we'll be discussing are on screen right now and the timestamps are in the description below with that said hello and welcome to raid live our first topic Busha samuels aka matidi so returns to mubango so fans of the sapc to Soapy Mubango will be thrilled to know that Musha Samuels is set to make a comeback on the Soapy this month. Now on the Soapy she plays the character of Mati Diso and the news was actually confirmed by Musha Samuels herself when she was spotted at the SABC's headquarters in Auckland Park where Mubango is recorded. Now according to Daily Sun she told them the following, I am excited about coming back to Mubango because it was my breakout role so it's good to be back. Now there were also sources that also confirmed the news revealing that she's been been shooting for a while now and the producers of the soapy brought her back to spice up things in the show there was also a comment from another source who claimed that the show has been skating on thin ice as ratings have dropped and in a supposed last ditch attempt by the producers to spice things up they have decided you know what let us bring back the character of machidi so to shake things up on the soapy now going off on a little bit of a tangent to those that watch mubango do you guys feel like the show is skating on thin ice and also other people who have actually stopped watching mubango Mubango. and if you have stopped do let us know in the comments down below exactly why have you stopped watching it for me personally i will say this i was never really an avid watcher of the soap and i believe that the last time i was watching it religiously was when noni was still on the show and after she left you know i kind of left with her as well but to be honest with you i've never really been you know like that heavily invested in the show but i will say that i am shocked to hear that the show is skating on thin ice because as we know shows like isitingo have gotten the axe so it would be sad to see or hear in the future that Mubango is also getting the axe. But going back to the story, it says that Bushe Samuels will be back to play the wicked character viewers love to hate. The producers are trying to get Mubango on the radar again because the ratings have dropped since the departure of some of the show's loved characters. I will admit that as fans and viewers of television shows, sometimes we can be stubborn because at the end of the day, we have to be realistic about these things. Characters need to grow. Characters need to move on from a show. It doesn't mean that if a character's storyline has come to an end, we as the viewers and the fans and the supporters need to also leave with that character i will put up my hand and say yes i am guilty of that too of leaving with some characters that i love when they get x from a show i also x myself from that show but on the flip side of that it is also hard to see a beloved character who is indeed keeping the show afloat and who is indeed entertaining to just get the x out of the blue unexpectedly just like sometimes all a character really needs is better writers to keep their storyline interesting now according to the reports we said Samuels will appear on Mubango on the 23rd of January, which is this week, Thursday. So do comment down below and let me know what you guys think about Mushe Samuels, aka Matiriso, returning to Mubango. And hopefully the viewers that have supposedly left the show will return with her. Our next topic, Chico Twala says, my son did not kill Senzo Meiwa. Now Chico Twala has affirmed once again that his son, Longwe Twala, did not kill Senzo Meiwa. Chico Twala said that my son may be an addict, but he is not violent. Now one cannot deny that it has been a difficult time for the Twalas and this is after that viral video of Chico Twala where he can be heard shouting at his sound loudly after handing him over to the police to be arrested. Put a bullet on him. If he runs away shooting because he's under arrest at the moment. I miss father. I can witness your shooting. The way the way it is running my own. I don't care. I'd rather bury you. You are better of dead than for you to destroy my name like this. Now that video is definitely not PG-13. Chico Twala is definitely upset in that video. You can hear it very loudly and very clearly from his voice. He uses some very strong language in it too. So that video is not for the faint of heart. But we did cover it here on Red Live. And if you do want to hear what he says in that particular video, I will link it in the top right hand corner of this video. But one very interesting thing that Chico Twala does say in that video is that he wishes that his son was the one who killed Senzo so that he could rot behind bars. I, I always said it, but I so wish you would have seen Senzo Meiwa. 
so that you can rot in jail. Rot in jail. I will never be mistaken for this shit. Now, considering that Chico and Longwe Twala are the two key names in the ongoing Senzo Meiwa case, this particular mention raised a lot of eyebrows. Now, if you are to believe the conspiracy theories and the rumors and the reports that are going around, many believe that Longwe Twala was the one who shot Senzo Meiwa. And of course, Chico Twala in that video saying that he wishes that his son was the one that killed him raised a lot of alarm bells. But after that video, in what a lot of people believe is a bid to clear his son's name, Chico Twala has spoken to the media and revealed some things. Things. Chico Twala shared the heartbreaking story of his son's 15 year drug addiction battle. He also shared that his son has stole over 300,000 rands worth of goods. And Chico Twala also admitted that he had spent over 1 million rand in rehabilitation fees on his son. But when it came time to discuss Senzo Meiwa, Chico Twala was very firm in that Longwe did not do it. This is what Chico Twala said I believe Longwe's story about what happened on the day Senzo was killed. He might be a junkie, but he is not violent he does not carry a gun if Longwe had murdered Senzo I would have handed him over to the police and for me that particular statement is very interesting because right now we do have proof and a video of Chico Twala handing over his son when he did something wrong in this particular case his son was stealing and it does seem that Chico Twala handed him over to the police now as far as the reports go as to what exactly he stole the reports are pointing to that he stole a cell phone a Huawei cell phone I don't know why anyone in 2020 is thinking a Huawei phone. I mean, it doesn't even support Google services anymore. But those are the stories that are going around. Apparently, he stole a cell phone. His father then took him to the police. And like I said, because now we have this video of Chico Twala bringing his son over to the police after the son has done something wrong, I suppose we would assume that he would have done the same had his son been the one who killed Senzo Meiwa. So I hope you guys actually see what's going on right there because for me, it seems like that is some good faith. We now know that Chico Twala is not the type of father who just accept some wrongdoing from their son and i suppose right now all we can do is take his word for it if his son was the one that killed senzo meiwa he would have handed him over to the police because he doesn't play and he doesn't take nonsense like that i would never be mistaken for this shit so do comment down below and let me know what you guys think about chico twala reaffirm that his son is not the one that killed senzo meiwa our next topic end of the road for tcom on the queen mzansi so the reports are saying just when viewers were intrigued by her devious and conniving character on Mzansi's popular soapy The Queen, Rami Chuene's character has been chopped. Now if you were to go off what Sunday World is reporting, the reason for her character being chopped is some controversies that are going on behind the scenes of the show with the makers of the show, the Fergusons. Now reports have definitely been coming out from The Queen Mzansi and them losing talented actors at a drastic rate over internal issues, leaving fans and viewers of the show puzzled as to why their popular and favorite characters are being killed off or just phased out of the show. Now according to Sunday World all the details that were pertaining to Rami Chuene's character being chopped emerged when they were given their script and that is when Rami apparently found out that her character would be getting the chop. Now Sunday World claims to have a source, a snitch that revealed to them that Rami Chuene's relationship with the Fergusons had hit rock bottom after she weighed in in the Vatisandara exploitation saga. If you guys don't remember last year the veteran actress Vatisandara penned an open letter to the sports arts and culture ministry Minister Natim Tetwa about what she alleged was exploitation of actors in the industry. And in that letter, she also spoke about poor remuneration and working conditions. Now, Remy Chweni showed support to this particular open letter by Vatiswa by pinning a thread on Twitter detailing challenges that actors endured in the industry under the hashtag show must go on. Now, this particular thread, Remy Chweni had written it a couple of months before Vatiswa Ndarab wrote that open letter. Now, although Remy Chweni did not mention the Fergusons in her tweet, it it is apparent that this did not sit well with the show's producers as they felt that she was referring to them. Now going back to the Sunday World source snitch, this is what the source said. Her remarks were tactic and she did not name them but they were sensitive. They never forgave her since then even though she didn't need forgiving. When the new script came, it was no surprise for us internally that the Fergusons have hit back. So going off that statement, it does seem that this particular Sunday World source got the script. So I'm assuming that that source is also part of the cast. But moving right along, Sunday World also had another source who further shed light that the producers of the Queen Mzansi were not happy about Remy Chuene's action of intervening with other actors' working hours. So it does seem that somehow, somehow Remy Chuene was trying to stand up for some of the other actors and the producers did not like that. But going back to Remy Chuene's character, T. Gom, apparently her character will be killed off after a confrontation with another woman over her affair with Uskumbuzo 
Kaiso. That is what a source said. She is going to be hit with a bottle at Blue Moon during a confrontation. And then after she will collapse and die, that is how she's going to exit the soapy. Look, if she's going to die from a bottle to the head, I must say that is a weak way to go out. Kind of reminds me of how weak SK Kosa's character was also killed off on the show. But apart from sources coming out and confirming that her character will be getting killed off on the show, Rami Chwene has also confirmed it on her social media. Now she posted the following picture on Instagram and captioned it. Tigom stint on hashtag the Queen Mzanti has come to an end. Unfortunately, I won't be getting into details as advised by my legal team. I still have to finish shooting and I am hoping to execute as excellently, exceptionally and professionally as I always have. Thank you for the love, well wishes and blessings. You have been the best part of this ride. Now let's finish strong. Kilirata Hood. Hashtag Tigom Nation forever. Hashtag Year of the Queen. Hashtag Talented Queen. Hashtag Gifted. Hashtag Grateful. Hashtag Mama Bear. Now apart from that on Instagram, she also posted on Twitter the following thank you message. It reads, thank you for all the well wishes and blessings. It's been a ride. We keep pushing and working because hashtag show must go on no matter what. Which points back to that thread that she had attached to Vatisandara's open letter. Now after the news came out yesterday, social media has definitely been a buzz with the Ferguson topping the Twitter trends most of the weekend. And it seems like a lot of the users on social media are of the opinion that the Fergusons are bullies. So do comment down below and let me know what you guys think about t -Gorm getting killed off. And just like that, we have come to the end of today's Red Hot News. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do by now. Give it a huge thumbs up. Share it with your family, your friends and your enemies. Confuse the hell out of everybody. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Raid Live if you haven't and binge watch my previous videos.